fact, I'm a researcher faculty at uh, the CSC department. Uh, my research area is databases. And uh, that is basically what we're going to be spending the next 15 weeks uh, talking about. So if we're going to be spending that much time talking about this thing, uh, well, first I want to convince you that it's actually something worth talking about. Uh, so, you know, why are you here? You signed up for this class, right? Um, you're, you're here to learn something. Uh, why? Well, uh, very simple reason. Uh, seven of the uh, top ten uh, Forbes Global 2000 software programming companies, uh, really their, their uh, central business model, or a large part of their central business model, is based on uh, data management and uh, keeping track of information. Uh, Oracle and SAP, this is basically what they do. Uh, other companies, Amadeus, uh, Intuit, uh, even to a large part, Microsoft, are all about managing data. Uh, so there's a lot of money in this. And if you're looking for internships, if you're looking for, uh, for jobs somewhere down the line, uh, data bases, data management is the place to be. Uh, on the other hand, more like me, uh, money isn't necessarily quite as much of a factor. But databases brings to the table a very large number of interesting problems. Uh, it's an application domain that really draws on um, everything. Uh, it draws on theory, systems, hardware, uh, algorithms. It takes ideas from everywhere and it applies them to solve real world problems. Uh, and I don't know, that, that, that's something I find extremely fun. Okay. You guys obviously. Thank you, at least some sound coming in there. Um, general uh, thing I want uh, to make clear, uh, if anything I say, um, I don't think we've gotten to that point yet, but if anything I say is unclear, I want your hand up. Uh, if, if you're thinking that something I said is unclear, odds are there's at least uh, 15 other people in the class thinking the same exact thing. So don't be, uh, don't be afraid to, to raise your hand. Uh, don't be afraid to say, Oliver, that's stupid. Um, you're, you're talking in gibberish, OK? Um, speak up. Um, OK, so I really like databases because it's super interesting. It brings in uh, stuff from a wide variety of different uh, areas, and it solves real world problems. But um, I've been throwing around this term databases. I haven't actually defined it. Um, what, what are databases? Um, companies use databases. Uh, we talk about uh, software like uh, Oracle, Postgres. Uh, but what, what exactly is the heart of uh, what you're going to learn in this class? Well, the, the basic idea behind databases is that you want to have uh, large amounts of data are pretty much useless if you can't um, apply them to something. You can't ask questions about them. You can't uh, keep the data consistent, uh, ordered, organized. Uh, and so what we're going to be talking about at a really, really high level is uh, how do you make sense of large amounts of data? How do you allow people uh, to make sense? How do you help people to make sense uh, of and keep track of very large amounts of data? Um, at a slightly uh, less high level, uh, this basically boils down to two questions. Uh, number one, how do we ask questions about data? And number two, how do we modify data? How, how do we safely uh, work with uh, data that needs to be uh, persistent, that needs to uh, stay intact for a long period of time? And I mean, this kind of brings in a whole bunch of different uh, areas. Uh, how do we ask uh, questions about data accurately? How do we combine all these different data sources together? Uh, how do we do this efficiently? Uh, how do we summarize the data so that humans can parse it uh, reasonably well? Uh, how do we keep data consistent? How do we keep data correct? How do we handle parallelism? Lots and lots of, of questions, but they all boil down to how do we store data? How do we safely modify data? How do we efficiently store, sorry, how do we efficiently retrieve uh, data and how do we, we uh, correctly uh, manipulate it? And like I said, databases kind of draws on a uh, pretty wide variety of different areas. Uh, so in some sense, what you're going to be uh, learning in this class is going to be a hodgepodge of different, uh, a buffet of, of different um, 
areas, uh, different uh, techniques for managing data, uh, different uh, recipes uh, or code design patterns uh, for managing data, uh, and uh, just general information that's going to be useful to you uh, as uh, you do uh, any kind of data management tasks. So really high level, this is kind of what we're going to be uh, talking about. And I'll go into a little more depth in just a moment. Uh, but before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the course itself. Uh, so this is kind of the logistics here. Um, there are uh, three people uh, that are going to be running this course. Uh, myself and our two TAs, Ning and uh, Vishravas. Uh, my name, hi Vishravas. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's going to be uh, two uh, course websites. Um, we're gonna, the main course website is off of my home page. Uh, you can get to it by just going to the department uh, website, finding the list of people, and going to uh, the website. Uh, there's also a Piazza forum that you can use to ask questions. I'm sure uh, everyone here is, uh, show of hands, who's used Piazza? He's still awake. Wouldn't want to bore you this early. Uh, okay, so Piazza, if you have any questions, um, post something there. Uh, we'll try and get back to you. I, again, uh, as with raising your hands in class, uh, if you have a question uh, and it hasn't been resolved by the end of class, odds are at least half the class has the same question. Uh, so don't be shy. Post. Uh, you can post anonymously to the rest of the class, so don't be shy about posting. Um, if you have questions, put them up there. Um, and and get to them as soon as possible. Uh, but the syllabus, uh, all of the course information, all of the course downloads are going to be off of uh, my website. Uh, speaking of that, uh, Piazza, we posted two uh, polls on Piazza. Uh, the first, uh, well, quick show of hands just here, uh, and then I'll know if the poll is, uh, is underrepresented. How many people would be interested in having a, a quote unquote, an unofficial recitation section? Okay. Uh, I want everyone who just raised your hand to go to Piazza, click on the link for the poll, and make sure to register which times you're available. And we'll try and schedule something uh, that works around everyone's uh, schedule. Uh, the second, and this one's kind of a little more uh, open-ended, uh, the course project is in Java. Uh, if you have any interest in, uh, unfortunately the infrastructure is built for the JVM, so uh, we're restricted to JVM-based languages, uh, but if you have some interest in using a JVM language other than Java, uh, then register your address there and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can uh, squeeze into the project. Um, but vote by Wednesday. Uh, put up your votes by Wednesday and uh, we'll try and let you know what the results are by Friday. Okay. Um, now, everyone's favorite uh, subject is grades. Um, the, project, uh, the course is divided into two parts. Uh, there's going to be a uh, technical content part and a programming assignment, uh, both worth about half of your grade. Uh, the programming assignments, you're going to be building a relational query engine, and we'll get into what I mean by that in just a moment. Um, and you're going to be working in up to three person groups. If you want to or a two person group, uh, go for it. Uh, the project should be basically scaled for about two people, um, two to three people. The course content is going to be 50% of your grade, and that's going to include two midterm exams that are going to be worth 15% of your overall grade each. Uh, there will be a comprehensive final exam at the very end. Um, go by the, there's an, a typo on the syllabus, uh, go by the one that is on Hub. I'll correct the syllabus. Uh, sure. By the way, all of this information is on the syllabus, which uh, as of today has been finalized modulo typos. We've uh, changed a couple of things over the, over the last week. Uh, so uh, go back to it, see if the, uh, see if it, if you have any questions, check the syllabus first. Uh, because the comprehensive final exam uh, is comprehensive, uh, if you happen to do better on the final exam than on either of the midterms, uh, then we'll try and uh, squeeze a little bit more. Uh, the, the final exam will count for a bit more. Um, whatever is in your benefit. Any questions so far?
the project. Um, so the project consists of uh, three checkpoints and a very simple setup project um, that's due a week from this coming Friday. Um, you're going to be allowed to have up to three person groups and you're going to be building a relational query engine. Now the grading in this class is a bit different from uh, a couple of other classes for the project. 5% um, of your grade will be on correctness. Uh, so you're going to be answering, uh, your code is going to be answering queries. 5% of your grade, can you answer the query correctly in a somewhat reasonable amount of time? 5% uh, of your grade, however, will be based on performance. Uh, so we have a reference implementation that is not optimized, not very well uh, built. Uh, it's designed to kind of be a quick pack. Um, and if you beat or beat the performance of this reference implementation, uh, that is worth an A. And I'll be describing what the reference implement, over the course of the, the uh, term, I'll be describing everything that I teach in the class with respect to how it would be implemented uh, or how it is implemented uh, in the reference implementation. So uh, we'll be telling you exactly how to get an A. 5% of, uh, of the grade uh, for the first two projects, definitely possibly the third project as well, uh, will be based on a code review. Um, this means you're going to schedule a appointment with the TAs uh, at some point in the week following the, de the project deadline. And you'll be re responsible for, uh, every team member is going to be responsible for describing uh, different aspects of the code and um, as well as uh, being able to generalize the code. And this is the important part. Um, I want to connect the project to what I'm talking about in class as much as possible. So every time you implement something, I want you thinking about how uh, what you implement is going to generalize to the things that I'm describing. Uh, we're not going to implement everything that I describe in class, uh, but I want you to at least think about how what you're doing generalizes uh, to that. Because we're going to ask you about it. And that's going to be 5% of your uh, project grade. Um, another thing, uh, if you've taken uh, operating systems, uh, then the process is very similar. Excuse me. There's a Git repository that you'll be getting for your group. And uh, there is a button on a website. And every time you click the button, uh, then your, your Git repository will get graded. You can click the button as many times as you like. Uh, if you are unsatisfied with how well your code is performing, uh, if you are unsatisfied with your grade, uh, click the button again. And, um, but make sure that you, you know, change a few things in the meantime. So submit as many times as you like. Uh, and only the best uh, grade will get counted. Okay, uh, so how does the project actually look like? Um, so as I said, you're going to be building a relational query processor. And a typical relational query processor looks kind of like this. Uh, you start off with a query, typically in a language like SQL. Uh, that, length, that query gets parsed into some internal representation, and we're going to give you some code for that. Um, the code gets parsed into that, uh, into that internal representation. And then typically a uh, query processor is going to uh, transform it through a couple of stages into uh, a representation that is a little bit more uh, amenable to uh, optimization, uh, that's a little easier to work with. Uh, we'll be describing one, one such uh, language called relational algebra uh, that you'll be uh, that we're going to encourage you to use as uh, a representation. Uh, this intermediate representation gets optimized, uh, sometimes based on statistics about the data, sometimes based on other things. Uh, but it gets optimized and then transformed into uh, an actual piece of code that gets executed. Um, so we'll be describing that process as well. And then finally, the code gets executed or interpreted and uh, you get a result. So in checkpoint one, we're going to focus mostly on uh, generating the results. Um, the first checkpoint, uh, you're going to be working with very small data. Uh, you're going to have fairly lax excuse me, time limits. And uh, 
really this should be fairly straightforward. Most of the code that you're going to be implementing here is uh, just infrastructure that you're going to be using in uh, subsequent projects. Now we'll talk about how that uh, happens over the next couple of lectures. Uh, in checkpoint two, uh, you're going to supplement that. Uh, we're going to impose some slightly stricter limits on um, how much memory your code has available, how much time your code has available uh, to execute. Um, this basically means that you're going to need to start uh, using some slightly more uh, interesting um, algorithms to process your queries. And you're going to need an optimizer that, uh, that can deploy those algorithms or, or tell you when those algorithms are appropriate for you. Finally, in checkpoint three, you're going to get a little bit of time uh, to gather statistics, to build indexes, to organize your data uh, in a more efficient way. You'll we'll also be getting some libraries to help you do that as well. Um, so in checkpoint three, uh, the time constraints are going to get even stricter, and uh, but you'll have some ability to pre-process your data, uh, to organize it, to get it into a form that can be that you can that you actually can process in uh, such a short period. So, uh, any questions up to this point? Yes? Um, so, the code review, will it be like individually or as a group? As a group, but uh, you'll meet the TAs as a group, but every person in the group will be responsible for answering uh, whichever questions the TA wants to pose. Anyone else? Projects um, just to get you guys to start forming groups and uh, get everything together is going to be due on February 6th. Um, just to be clear, uh, this you have a, two weeks to do this, but the project basically amounts to write a Hello World program, put it in a Git repository, and make sure you have your group created. If you can't do that in two weeks, um, you want to find a different class. Either way. Uh, Two weeks, uh, a week from Friday, excuse me, uh, this is due. You're going to get a couple of libraries to help you out. Um, the first of these is uh, one called JSQL Parser. This is a publicly available uh, on SourceForge uh, tool for translating SQL query files into uh, some structured uh, Java classes that you can uh, analyze and transform a little more efficiently. Uh, you're going to get some code that will help you evaluate arithmetic expressions, and uh, you'll be getting an indexing and persistence layer. And if you come up with any other libraries that might be useful over the, the course of the term, uh, we'll put them on as well. Uh, but these are, are the uh, basis, and we'll, give, uh, we'll be giving you documentation when we, for these uh, when we release uh, project. Um, okay, uh, again, any questions? Yes. Um, Berkeley DB will be available in checkpoint three. Uh, GSQL Parser and EvalLib are going to be av uh, available for checkpoint four. Uh, does that answer your question? Any other questions? Uh, all right. So now is the the slide that I am not really too uh, thrilled about needing to use. Um, I want to make a couple of things clear. Uh, so what I consider cheating is using any kind of work, any kind of code uh, that you didn't produce yourself. Um, this means resources, code exchange resources like Stack Exchange uh, or similar websites are not OK. Um, now, typically, I'm all for using websites like this. Uh, they help you reinvent, they help you uh, avoid reinventing the wheel. Um, but in this case, we are actually reinventing the wheel. There are bajillion query parsers, query processors out there already. Um, the point is to learn how they're implemented. Uh, so in this particular case, Stack Exchange is not an acceptable resource. Um, feel free to use Wikipedia, Wikibooks, 
textbooks, any kind of uh, reference material. That's that's okay. Um, and feel free to discuss things with your classmates. Uh, saying, you know, talking about hash indexes and saying uh, that talking about their performance characteristics is perfectly fine. Um, but uh, I don't want, I've heard uh, plenty of cases where uh, you know, you're tired, you're, uh, someone comes to you and says, I want some help, uh, but you, you want to help them, but it's, you know, you're tired, it's late, it's coming up on the deadline, and you just show them your code. No, that's, that's not acceptable, okay? Uh, and just to make this uh, point clear, uh, I use a system called MOS, uh, which detects when um, code has been copied. Uh, just to give you, MOS is really quite good at this. Um, it will detect the same code sequences pretty effectively, even if those code sequences have been transformed or uh, you, know, you change the spacing, you change the variable names, uh, or even the layout, you move it into like a, you move it from a case statement into an iterator class. Uh, I've had cases of that. Uh, now, just to be clear, MOS is also very good at not detecting, uh, sorry, at detecting when uh, people implement things the same way because that's the only way to implement um, And in the end, I'm going to be looking at the code and if it makes sense to me, that's fine. Uh, but I just want to be clear about this. The, we have tools, we have ways of figuring out whether or not your, uh, your submission includes code from someone else. And if it does, uh, you're going to get penalized. Um, if I catch you submitting someone else's work, and I just want to be absolutely clear about this. If I catch you submitting someone else's work, uh, you'll, you're going to fail the class. Uh, if your teammate submits code, you're going to get penalized. And if someone else submits your work as their own, uh, I really have a very little way of telling who submitted what work. So uh, I just want to be absolutely clear about this, absolutely upfront about this. Um, there's a zero tolerance policy for academic reading. Okay, um, now that said, um, Quick show of hands, uh, who here has worked with something like Java or C Sharp or C++ in the past? Okay, good. So let's, uh, what I'm going to do right now, uh, let's see how much time we have. Let's make this uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, I have a little bit of a, uh, I'm not going to call it a test, but just a quick evaluation. Um, I want to get a sense of how familiar you are with uh, Java. So if you can uh, put your books away, grab a pen, and uh, a couple of questions on the intricacies of Java.
I'm going to talk predominantly here about data management systems because they're kind of the they're more atomic, they're more uh, fundamental, uh, and you can take lots of data management systems and plug them together into a database. But the the problems that a data management system kind of addresses are essentially the same. Um, there are data management systems to help with analysis, and there are data management systems to help with data manipulation. And ultimately, they're trying to address the same set of questions. Um, how can I help a user access their data, uh, both uh, intuitively and efficiently? Um, what kind of languages can I give pe uh, people to ask questions about their data? Or uh, what kind of how do I organize the data in such a way that the user can access it efficiently? And we're, we're going to be talking about all this throughout the, uh, uh, over the course of the term. On the other hand, uh, on the other side, uh, data manipulation, uh, what kind of tools can we give users to keep their data correct, to keep their data consistent, and basically to, to just keep their data in a form that can be analyzed uh, while still staying efficient? So, how does a data management system work? What is, uh, what is the core insight? What is the thing that uh, the, the secret sauce is? And, I mean, it's, it seems like I can just use a hard drive to store data. I want to uh, put data somewhere and be able to access it after the fact. Well, why don't I just use a hard drive? Well, the distinction between a hard drive and a data management system uh, is really simple. Uh, it's what level of granularity do you have access to. Um, a hard drive sees files, it sees individual, uh, individual uh, big blobs of data. It doesn't really care about what's in there, it just cares about uh, that there is a sequence of bits that someone wants me to read back at a later time. Uh, a data management system, on the other hand, uh, maintains structure. Uh, it keeps the data organized and it keeps it laid out in a way that makes it accessible at a later time. And a data management system is going to exploit the data's structure in order to make things more efficient, uh, make things easier to use, and just make things more uh, effective. So let's talk about structure. Um, and by structure, I really mean what is the data? How do you describe data? Uh, show of hands, who here has taken a BL course? Okay, good. You guys are going to have a little bit of a leg up. Um, kind of the simplest form of structure is how is the data uh, laid out? How is the data organized? Uh, and this is captured by this idea of types. Um, and I mean things like primitive types. I'm going to be using these terms throughout the uh, rest of the term, so I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, primitive types, uh, like strings, integers, uh, floating point numbers, and so forth. Uh, there's some argument as to whether a string is a prim primitive type. I'm going to treat it as, as one. Uh, people types, or records sometimes, or rows, uh, which are uh, fixed lengths. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, C structs, Basically that. It's a fixed length set of attribute value pairs. Uh, like for example, uh, a record that's uh, name uh, is Kirk and ship is 170. Um, and they don't necessarily have to have uh, names. They can be identified by their position as well. Uh, or collections. And by a collection I mean any kind of uh, list or, or a sequence of, uh, of records, or set of records. I want to be a little bit more specific about collections because pretty much everything that a data management system does uh, is based around managing collections, managing collections efficiently. Uh, so let me turn to you guys. If I have a collection, just some number of records, uh, a big bag of records, bags of records a big bucket of records, uh, what kind of properties can I enforce on that big bucket? Order? Um, so you can enforce order. Great. What else? Uh, speak up. Okay, so you can enforce uh, schema information about the data. Um, anything else? Uh, 
speak up. Adam, uh, so uniqueness. Uh, okay. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other different uh, properties that I can enforce on this big bucket of records. Uh, and I, if I talk about different kinds of properties that I'm trying to enforce, I end up with different kinds of data structures that you all, all are hopefully familiar with, such as arrays, maps, uh, sets, bags, and so forth. Uh, and all of this boils down to uh, this idea of schemas. Uh, restricting the type of elements in the data set. Uh, I'll give you an example of, of what a schema is. Uh, for JSON and XML, uh, show of hands who's heard of JSON and XML? Um, so the schema is actually defined as part of the data set. Uh, all of the uh, names, all of the fields are defined in the JSON object or uh, the uh, XML object. Show of hands, uh, who's worked with relational databases before? Okay, so I can actually ask this. Uh, what have you guys, what is a, uh, given the terminology that I've described so far, uh, of collections, of uh, properties on those collections, of tuples, of uh, primitive types, uh, how would I cat uh, categorize a relational table? A collection of? Of, of records or tuples, uh, and what goes in the tuples? Uh, is there further restriction on what's in, what can go in the tuples? Right. Primitive types. Uh, so I can have uh, a relational table is an unordered set of tuples and primitives. Uh, how could I talk about a relational database? Yeah? Okay, so I can put additional uh, constraints on relational tables. Uh, what about a relational database? Just a, the, what is a database? It's a collection of tables. Bingo. Uh, or I can talk about a tuple of relational tables, if, depending on how you look at it. It's either a fixed size or a uh, collection. Uh, what about a log file? Well, okay, let me back up. Uh, let's back away from relational databases and see how this generalizes. The output of an application is uh, the whatever gets dumped out by uh, some server process, for example. A log file that gets dumped out by a server process. Can I think of that in this way? Uh, can I give that some sort of schema? What kind of schema? How would I talk about it? Uh, yeah. uh, so in the language that I described, collections, tuples, primitives, what is a log file? Okay, it could be formatted using XML, so I could impose additional uh, constraints on it, but just a log file. What is data? Data? What do you mean by data about the data? So that would be true for XML or JSON. Uh, what about like a uh, sir, uh, just a sir web page X to host Y, sir web page Z to host uh, Q. So, Okay, so uh, what does the line limiter mean? To separate, it separates. Okay, so uh, it's a sequence of primitives, string primitives, uh, and it's a collection. It's an ordered collection, an ordered list of whatever the log entry happens to be. Uh, if the log entry is formatted in uh, XML, maybe there's structure on it. If the log entry is uh, just raw strings. It's, again, the, the the point I'm trying to get across here is that schemas can be imposed on nearly anything. Um, what about an image? 
Can I post some kind of schema on an image? On image data, graphical data? Uh, what do you mean by an ordered set of tuples? Okay, so I could have uh, every pixel represented as one element in a two-dimensional collection. Or, uh, in other words, I could represent it as an ordered list of ordered lists of uh, tuples that represent the pixel information. Um, so basically my, my entire point here is that anything, any kind of data, you can impose some kind, if you can impose, some, if there is any kind of structure to the data whatsoever, uh, you can impose a schema. And uh, the schema is going to help us a lot. Uh, question, why? Uh, why would the schema help us? So here's a question for you guys. And feel free to, let's maybe take, oh wow, we are actually out of time. Uh, so let me end on this and basically say, that, uh, let me post this on uh, yeah. uh If you have a unordered set of 100 attribute tuples, and your queries ask for one specific attribute for five rows of this, post on Piazza, we monitor your posts, and hopefully get a little bit of a discussion going. Um, and yeah, so 